the sign of intelligence is that you are constantly wondering. Idiots are always dead sure about every damn thing they are doing in their life. The most beautiful moments in life are moments when you are expressing your joy, not when you are seeking it. If you resist change, you resist life. When pain, misery, or anger happen, it is time to look within you, not around you. If you ask a tree how he feels to know that he is spreading his fragrance and making people happy, I don't think a tree looks at it that way. I am just like that, and it is just my nature to be like this. The fear is simply because you are not living with life, you are living in your mind. Too many people are hungry not because there is dearth of food. It is because there is dearth of love and care in human hearts. The planet is spinning on time, not a small event. All the galaxies are managing fine, the whole cosmos is doing great. But you have one nasty little thought crawling through your head, and it is a bad day. The problem is you are living in a psychological space that bears no connection with reality. And you are insecure, because it can collapse at any moment. Every moment there are a million miracles happening around you, a flower blossoming, a bird tweeting, a bee humming, a raindrop falling, a snowflake wafting along the clear evening air. There is magic everywhere. If you learn how to live it, life is nothing short of a daily miracle. Love is your quality. Love is not what you do. Love is what you are. There are many ways to understand this. One simple way to know this is, today, if you lose your mental peace totally, you will go to a doctor. He will give you a pill. If you take this pill, your system will become peaceful. Maybe this will last just for a few hours, but you become peaceful. This pill is just a little bit of chemicals. These chemicals enter your system and make you peaceful. Or in other words, what you call peace is a certain kind of chemistry within you. Similarly, what you call joy, what you call love, what you call suffering, what you call misery, what you call fear, every human experience that you go through has a chemical basis within you. Now the spiritual process is just to create the right kind of chemistry where you are naturally peaceful, naturally joyous. When you are joyous by your own nature, when you don't have to do anything to be happy, then the very dimension of your life, the very way you perceive and express yourself in the world will change. The very way you experience your life will change, Krishna says in the Gita, the worst crime in the world is indecision. If you think you are big, you become small. If you know you are nothing, you become unlimited. That's the beauty of being a human being. I am not talking about you being a spectator, I am talking about involvement. I am talking about involving yourself into life in such a way that you dissolve into it. People have fallen in love with words and lost the world. It's time to regain it. Everything that ever happened to you, you experienced right within you. Light and darkness, pain and pleasure, agony and ecstasy, all of it happened within you. If someone touches your hand right now, you may think you are experiencing their hand, but the fact of the matter is you are only experiencing the sensations in your own hand. The whole experience is contained within. All human experience is 100% self-created. Sex in the body is fine. Money in the wallet is fine. It is only a problem when they enter your mind. Learning to listen is the essence of intelligent living. If you want to become life-sensitive, a simple process that you do is this, make whatever you think and whatever you feel less important. Try and see for one day. Suddenly you will feel the breeze, the rain, the flowers and the people. Or in other words, what you call peace is a certain kind of chemistry within you. Similarly, what you call joy, what you call love, what you call suffering, what you call misery, what you call fear, every human experience that you go through has a chemical basis within you. Now the spiritual process is just to create the right kind of chemistry where you are naturally peaceful, naturally joyous. When you are joyous by your own nature, 
when you don't have to do anything to be happy, then the very dimension of your life, the very way you perceive and express yourself in the world will change. The very way you experience your life will change, Krishna says in the Gita, the worst crime in the world is indecision. If you think you are big, you become small. If you know you are nothing, you become unlimited. That's the beauty of being a human being. I am not talking about you being a spectator, I am talking about involvement. I am talking about involving yourself into life in such a way that you dissolve into it. People have fallen in love with words and lost the world. It's time to regain it. Everything that ever happened to you, you experienced right within you. Light and darkness, pain and pleasure, agony and ecstasy, all of it happened within you. If someone touches your hand right now, you may think you are experiencing their hand, but the fact of the matter is you are only experiencing the sensations in your own hand. The whole experience is contained within. All human experience is 100% self-created. Sex in the body is fine. Money in the wallet is fine. It is only a problem when they enter your mind. Learning to listen is the essence of intelligent living. If you want to become life-sensitive, a simple process that you do is this, make whatever you think and whatever you feel less important. Try and see for one day. Suddenly you will feel the breeze, the rain, the flowers and the people. If your energies go in search of relationship, we call this yoga. A human is not a being, he is a becoming. He is an ongoing process, a possibility. For this possibility to be made use of, there is a whole system of understanding the mechanics of how this life functions and what we can do with it, which we refer to as yoga. Mind is not in any one place. Every cell in this body has its own intelligence. The brain is sitting in your head, but mind is all over the place. The quality of your life depends on how well you manage your body, your mind, your emotion, your situations, your home, your communities, nations, your life in general and the world. Reactivity is enslavement. Responsibility is freedom. Unless you do the right things, the right things will not happen to you. The only thing that stands between you and your well-being is a simple fact. You have allowed your thoughts and emotions to take instruction from the outside rather than the inside. On, when we say transformation, it means that nothing of the old has remained. Something totally new has flowered within you. Now you look at a rose plant that is full of thorns. Springtime came and rose flowers burst out, it is a transformation. The thorns are still there, there are more thorns than flowers, but we do not call it a thorn plant. We call it a rose plant because of that single rose. Everyone's attention goes more towards that single rose than a hundred thorns that are on the plant, isn't it? So all the thorns in you, maybe you cannot remove them right now, but if one rose flower blossoms, everyone is willing to overlook those things. If you eat raw meat, it takes between 70 to 72 hours to pass through your system. Cooked meat takes 50 to 52 hours, cooked vegetables 24 to 30 hours, uncooked vegetables 12 to 15 hours, fruits 1 and a half to 3 hours. One of the biggest problems in the world today is loneliness. It is quite incredible. The planet is teeming with 7 billion people, but people are lonely. If someone enjoys being alone, there is no problem at all. But most people are suffering because of it. They are going through serious psychological problems as a consequence. If you are lonely, it is because you have chosen to become an island unto yourself. It doesn't have to be this way. I am not responsible makes you unwilling to get along with anyone until you can't even get along with yourself. It often comes to a point when you believe you are not even responsible for what is happening within yourself. Confidence and stupidity are a very dangerous combination. But they generally go together. It is our compulsive reaction to the situations in which we are placed that causes stress. To be enlightened is not a condition of certainty. 
it is to move from limited knowing to boundless unknowing, from gravitas to grace. It is to awaken to a condition of borderless ignorance, of limitless uncertainty. When you are no longer bound by the limitations of creation, you are blessed with the freedom of the Creator. If your body, if your mind, if your emotions, if your energies are not functioning the way you want them to, then this is the worst kind of slavery, because somebody else decides what should happen within you. If somebody else decides what should happen around you, that itself you call a slavery. But if someone decides what should happen within you, is it not a more horrible way of being a slave? But please see, the whole world is in this slavery. The only consolation is everybody is like this. Yogis are not against pleasure. It is just that they are unwilling to settle for little pleasures. They are greedy. But to be loving is simply this, a willingness to respond freely and openly. Right now, it may be limited to one or two people in your lives. But it is possible to extend this ability to embrace the entire world, when you have that, you dream of this, and when you have this, you dream of that. Maybe you call it romantic, but it's just plain stupidity. It destroys life. The way you eat not only decides your physical health, but the very way you think, feel, and experience life. Trying to eat intelligently means understanding what kind of fuel this body is designed for and accordingly supplying it, so that it functions at its best, being responsible is taking ownership of your life. It means you have taken the first radical step to becoming a complete human being, fully conscious and fully human. In taking responsibility and beginning the journey toward conscious living, you are putting an end to the age-old patterns of assigning blame outward or heavenward. You have begun the greatest adventure life has to offer, the voyage inward. To program the calories you must consume and the number of hours you must sleep is a foolish way to handle life. People have gotten used to living a botched-up life, to be anxious, insecure, hateful, jealous, and in various states of unpleasantness through the day. Slowly humanity has begun to see it as normal. None of these things are normal. These are abnormalities. Once you accept them as part of life they become normal because the majority has joined the gang of unpleasantness. They are all saying, unpleasantness is normal. Being nasty to each other is normal. Being nasty to myself is normal. Someone trusted that you would be doing good things at least to yourself and said, Do unto others what you do unto yourself. I am telling you, never do unto others what you are doing to yourself. By being with people, I know what they are doing to themselves is the worst thing. Fortunately, they are not doing such horrible things to others. Only once in a while they are giving a dose to others, but to themselves they are giving it throughout the day. Responsibility simply means your ability to respond. Money is definitely needed, but how much money do we really need? If we would change our idea of a successful life to a joyful life, we would find our need for money would dramatically decrease. The most incredible thing is that you can know everything you wish to know with your eyes closed. Death is a fiction created by people who live their lives in total unawareness. There is only life, life and life alone, moving from one dimension to another, another dimension to another. The logic is simple, if you do the right things, the right things will happen to you even without your intent. Your life is just about craving and making something else tremendously more important than you. The spiritual journey is a journey towards clarity, but never towards certainty. When you draw conclusions about beginnings and endings, you are a believer. When you accept that you really do not know anything, you become a seeker. Nothing has ever been out of place in this existence. Things have been out of place in human societies. Your body is on loan from the planet. All the countless numbers of people who have lived on this planet before you and me have all become topsoil, and so will you. This planet will collect back atom by atom what it has loaned to you. If terrible things have happened to you, 
you ought to have grown wise. If the worst possible events have befallen you, you should be the wisest of the lot. But instead of growing wise, most people become wounded. In a state of conscious response, it is possible to use every life situation, however ugly, as an opportunity for growth. But if you habitually think, I am the way I am because of someone else, you are using life situations merely as an opportunity for self-destruction or stagnation. If you handle your entire life with logic alone, you will end up a mess. The moment it is in touch with the earth, the body recognizes it. That is why spiritual people in India walked barefoot and always sat upon the ground in a posture that allows for maximum area of contact. In this way, the body is experientially reminded that it is just a part of this earth. Never should the body forget what it is. If it forgets, it will start making fanciful demands, if you constantly remind it, then it knows its place. An intellectual understanding that is not backed by experiential knowledge can lead to mind games and deceptive states.